only 60% of the value of a watch, including its movement, has to originate in Switzerland to be able to have Swiss made on the dial. Lots of Swiss brands source cases and dials and other components from China and other parts of Asia. And by using a Swiss movement and carrying out their assembly in Switzerland, they can still claim to be Swiss made. Now I have no problem with this. Globalization means that many of the things that we buy in the West can be made and sold at more affordable prices. And it helps companies to make more profit. And profit's not such a bad thing. Profit enables businesses to stay in business. And it allows them to invest in creating newer and better things for us to enjoy. But with many of the brands that we hold in such high esteem, perpetuating this misconception that their watches are 100% made in Switzerland, right down to the spring bars, it allows us to assume that everything else must be subpar in comparison. The reality is that many Swiss brands have been using Chinese suppliers for many years, not only because it helps them to reduce costs, but also because the parts that they buy are up to Swiss standards. They have to be, otherwise they wouldn't use them. So with Asian companies supplying the Swiss watch industry, Chinese brands like Sega Design launched their own products in an attempt to compete. And while I think that they've got a way to go before they can beat the Swiss at their own game, if this watch is anything to go by, I'd say they've got a bright future. So if you're new here, my name's Simon, and I mostly talk about watches. And if you like watches too, then why not hit that subscribe button and go back and check out some of my other videos later. And if you've already subscribed, then you can still help the channel to grow by giving this video a like. So I've reviewed watches from Sega Design before, such as their Blue Planet. That one ruffled a few feathers back in 2021 by winning a coveted GPHG award. And the brand also has a slew of Red Dot Design awards to its name. This watch is called the Series X Gorilla, and this time we've got a very different look, with this square case and a skeletonized dial. Well, technically it's not actually square. The case measures in at a hefty 46 by 44 millimeters, and on this model it's made from stainless steel, finished in a matte black DLC coating. There are purple accents on the crown and on the screws in each corner of the case, as well as this plate on the opposite side to the crown, which I can only assume is there to add symmetry. The case design features rounded corners, and there's a high polished bevel to the edge that creates some contrast with the matte surfaces when it catches the light. Although this is a big bruiser of a watch, it's relatively thin at just 11.8 millimeters, and it sits pretty flat on the wrist. And being an almost lugless design, it wears surprisingly well. Even on my skinny wrists, I can just about pull it off. The case is a two-piece construction with shock-absorbing springs in each corner. It's a nice idea, and not dissimilar to the kind of thing that Formex are doing on their Essence range. But in practice, there doesn't seem to be much give, so I'm not sure how much damping those springs actually provide. Of course, this watch's real party piece is that skeletonized dial, which sits between two pieces of flat sapphire glass. The movement is held in position by X-shaped bridge plates that have a purple infill, which is also loomed, as are the hour and minutes hands, which have a purple arrow-shaped tip, and there's a purple seconds hand that continues the theme, though other colorways are also available. There are no indices, which can make it a little hard to tell the time at a glance, but a small triangle is moulded into the case at 12 o'clock, and there are extrusions at 3, 6 and 9 for anyone who needs a little more help. I'm guessing that the proprietary CD01 automatic movement is based on a Solita. It's a 4Hz movement, and it has a reasonable 40 hours of power reserve. And it's a real joy to behold. The movement looks like it's almost suspended, 
and you can see the balance wheel spinning away at the 6 o'clock position, and the mainspring is clearly visible at 12. You can see it tightening up as you wind the watch, and you can almost use it as a power reserve indicator as it uncoils when you're not wearing it. The watch comes supplied with two straps. There's this soft silicon rubber strap, which is moulded with a pattern that complements the industrial look of the watch. It's super comfortable, if not a bit of a dust magnet. And then you also get a ribbed fabric strap. So this Series X Gorilla is available from the Sega Design site, and if you're ordering from the UK it's £375, or $379 if you're in the US. Though Sega Design have also given me a link that will get you a discount, I'll leave that in the description, right down about here. But is it worth that price? And should you buy it? Well, square watches and skeletonized dials are two things that can be a bit like Marmite to many watch guys. So this watch isn't going to be for everyone. Personally, I quite like both attributes. I mean, I've got a couple of Monaco's in my collection, and I quite liked that Bell & Ross BR05 Skeleton Golden that I reviewed earlier this year. Like this, that also had a square case with rounded corners. And I'm really impressed by the way that the skeletonization has been done on this Sega design. I'll stick my neck out and say it's probably one of the best examples of skeletonization that I've seen, certainly from a micro brand. The way the movement looks like it's suspended in thin air is just really, really cool. And I find myself mesmerised by watching that balance wheel and seeing the cogs turning. It definitely gives you a bit of that Richard Meal look, but probably for less than you'd pay for one of their spring bars. As with the other Sega design watches I've reviewed, the build quality and the fit and finish is just superb. And these silicon straps they use are some of the most comfortable that I've worn. I wish that more brands used them. And their packaging is way beyond anything I've seen at this price point. But with all that said, it's not all good news with this watch, and there are a few areas for improvement. Starting with the case, it's big. I mean, it's really big. And I know I've got pretty small wrists at just under six and a half inches, but I think the case is larger than it needs to be to accommodate the movement. And I just can't understand why, when designing this watch, they said, well, we need the case to be 44 millimeters, but hey, why don't we make it 46? It also has this very industrial look. Now, tell me what you guys think, but it's certainly not what I would call beautiful, at least not to my Western eyes. And let's face it, most of us buy watches because they're beautiful things. Almost like man jewellery, not just because we need something to tell the time. Now, Sega Design has won far more design awards than I ever have, so far be it from me to tell them what to do. But to me, the contrast between the beauty of the skeletonized dial and the industrial look of the case is just a bit jarring. Now, they actually make a slightly smaller version of this watch with a white ceramic case. It's part of a range that they market towards women. Now, I think in white ceramic, this looks far better. And despite being aimed at the fairer sex, I could actually see myself wearing that one. Then there's that gorilla's head on the side of the case. Now, I get that this watch is called the Series X Gorilla, but printing an image of a gorilla on the side of the watch just looks a bit tacky to me. I guess it's supposed to be fun, and if it was engraved or etched, it would look far better. But printed in white, it just cheapens the look of this watch. Finally, and this is probably a bit picky given the price, while the build quality is excellent, the finishing on the movement leaves a bit to be desired when you get it under a loop or a macro lens. With that aside, most of my criticisms are about the aesthetics. And in a somewhat ironic twist, I think design is the one area where Sega needs to focus if it's going to beat the Swiss at their own game. Prior to Covid, I travelled to China many times with work, and having experienced their culture, it feels to me as though the design of this watch would appeal much more to the Asian market 
than it might to our more conservative Western tastes. But I think if they can work on reducing the size of their cases, and developing some more refined designs, it won't be long before C design are able to give the Swiss watch industry some serious competition. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.